Morning, members. Morning, members of the public. Welcome to the Grant Advisory Committee meeting today, 27th of August, 10 o'clock. Um, we'll get cracking straight away, if you don't mind. Um, so, number one, apologies for absence, please, Aaron. Uh, thank you, Chair. There are no apologies for absence this morning. I might remember if I've forgotten anything, you will nudge me. Thank you very much. Uh, declarations of interest from members. Thank you. And the minutes from the previous meeting, if I may. Is everybody happy with that? If not, I shall go through. The, the normal process of, where is it? Well, it's just uh, one page. So it's just page. Oh, you missed it. Page four. Yeah, well, apologies. That's it. Yeah. Everyone happy? Yeah. Good. In that case, then we go to agenda item number four, which is the community chest funding applications. That's page three to twenty in your agenda. Uh, who's taking this today? Is that you or Vic? Yeah. Um, Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm taking it today. Bang. Crack on. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Vicky is on some well-deserved leave, so I'll be presenting today. If you can just give me a shout if you can't hear me or if I'm not talking loud enough, that'd be great. Okay, so we start with the first case, which is Foxton Football Club. Um, the project there is replacement goalposts. Um, the club are affiliates to Cambridge FA, um, a local grassroots football club, and they've currently got 50 members. The club's an integral part of Foxton community and open to all ages. Um, it's good for physical well well-being and mental health. Um, they intend to purchase mobile goalposts with 360 wheels. This allows them to store the goalposts in a locked compound between matches. Um, at the moment, they're stored sort of on the side of the field, um, and the parish council have asked them to find a solution for this. So the solution they found is these goalposts on wheels. Um, the total project cost is 4,200. Um, the Football Foundation have contributed 1440. The parish council have contributed 1380, and they're requesting a thousand pounds to uh, fund the gap. There'll also be 1380 left to find, which they've said they're quite happy to do by fundraising efforts. Um, and, and we also signposted them towards some other grants. Um, Councillor Roberts emailed back in support of the project. Um, and as you've heard, the parish council have helped fund this project too. Thank you. Members, uh, Councillor Hanley. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, looks like a good proposal to me. I, it's good to see, um, you know, that they're helping themselves, the Parish Council are helping them, Football Foundation. Um, so I'm, I'm inclined to say yay. Thank you, Thornton. Um, yes, Chair. Yeah, I'm a uh, county council for that area, not district councillor, but they are a very active local football club, so I would support. I'm very happy. I, I just thought the way it was written um, that they got 360 wheels was quite amusing. <laughs> They're very mobile goals. That's what they call moving the goalposts. <laughs> That's it. Okay, on that, on that uh, basis, then we'll, we'll accept that as approved. Yeah? Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Okay, on to number two, which is. Um, Gamlingay Schools Out Club. So this is a community group in Gamlingay. Um, the project is around buying some gym slash floor mats for their summer club. Uh, their summer club. It's a retrospective application because, as you can remember, we didn't meet last month. So there's a couple of applications here that we would have taken to the last committee meeting, but we had to bring to this one because we didn't meet. The Gamlingay Schools Out Club is a not for profit charity who hosts a children's summer club at the primary school. It's got six committee members 
and they basically open for one week during the summer holidays to provide a kind of play space for the kids there. The, kid, the kids who join are between 5 and 15 and are either residents uh, in Gamlingay or children who attend the school. Um, with only two weeks notice before they were due to open, they were advised that they no longer had access to one of the school halls, so they had to find a, an area to compensate for this because quite a lot of their activities are based on floor play activities. Um, they get about 70 children per day um, and 30 adult teenage volunteers across the week. They normally charge £5 a session, um, but this year they reduced it to £3 just because of the financial burden that everyone's felt this year from COVID. Um, the area they found was an outdoor space, so they, they had to purchase some of those jigsaw kind of soft foam tiles to allow the kids to play on there comfortably. Um, the mats will be useful for many years to come, um, so it's leaving a legacy there. Um, but they weren't budgeted for, and obviously for such a small group, only active one week in a year, um, they had to they had to go and fund them themselves. So the total project cost is three hundred and fifty pounds, um, and that's basically on on mats, on three different types of mats. And Bridget Smith has been approached, and she supports she, she supports the project as well. Um, the parish council haven't um, supported the project. Thank you. Comments, colleagues. John, did did I hear Mr. Clark correctly that the parish council have not supported this? We did. They haven't given them any money. Um, we didn't actually get a response in time from the parish council, I'm afraid. So we don't, we just know what the group said to us. And that was that the parish council hadn't given them any money. Whether they uh, uh, pushed them particularly hard on it or not, I think it was a short notice thing that they just sorted out. I probably shouldn't read too much into it then, Sharon. Um, it does seem to me that they say they take children from outside the area. It's a relatively small amount of money that they're asking for. And it does provide um, at short notice when they've got all these children coming, it certainly filled a gap. And, and it was better than saying, no, thank you very much, or I'll look after council. So I would support it. Um, similarly to Council, Councillor Ellington, the, the whole point here is this was, they had two weeks notice. Um, uh, and, and so I, I support it because they've been able to, they, they could have just cancelled the whole thing and we wouldn't have had a submission, but it went ahead and so I think it would be good for us to support it. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with everything that's been said and I think for the families who were concerned, it would have been really important to, to have that uh, Really, the facility during the school holiday is really important, both for the children who benefit from it and, and from the families. I, I think we should support this. That just leaves me, and I'll be yes in that. Thanks. Uh, Jane for yes. Thank you. Um, the only other thought I had on that one to benefit the community could be to suggest that they allow the mats to be used by other groups throughout the year while they're not using them. Do you want me to suggest that as part of the grant? Um, I'm just thinking out loud, and we're starting to go back into a bit of a spike, aren't we, at the moment, with regards to COVID, and I wonder whether that would be prudent that when, when the time is right, perhaps we okay. might consider okay. that. Just leave that for a bit. Okay, next one is Hardwick Preschool. Uh, they're a registered charity. Um, and the grant is for improvements to community buildings and spaces. Um, Hardwick Preschool is a community-based preschool. They meet in a purpose-built mobile classroom with an enclosed outdoor area in the grounds of Hardwick Community Primary School. The group are planning to improve their children's play area by having a pergola fitted to cover the children's digging area. 
there's no covered area in the playground at the moment and this would allow the kids to play outside during the rain in the digging area the project doesn't benefit the wider community but it will allow the children that attend the preschool um, to use the outside area promoting active lifestyle um, under the canopy they're saying they're going to develop new skills in the sand pit and mud kitchen area um, there's also many children that attend for many years at the preschool um, when they hold events at the preschool the children will be able to have shade and shelter the cost of the pergola and digging it, the bed out is 2400 um, they've already started plans for fundraisers and they uh, raised a thousand pounds last year so they're looking to do that again this year and a few smaller events covid allowing um, the total project cost is the 2460 they've applied for a thousand and they think they can fundraise for the rest um, hadn't received the response from Grenville I don't believe um, but the parish council supports the project in principle and they have supported this group in the past financially and that's it thank you Bill okay. um pandemic the coronavirus we're encouraging people to be active outside um, this seems to be a bit of a no-brainer really it's my view thank you Claire yeah I, I can't remember which other preschools uh, set up like this we've supported in the past I think we have supported them haven't we Melbourne um, and I, I was just a bit sort of worried when it said the project doesn't directly benefit the wider community um, but I suppose that depends on how you're defining the wider community it affects the families um, and, and that's part of the wider community um, I, I think we should support this um, and the fact that the parish council has supported them in the past I think is, is good um, although I do wonder how they're going to raise the rest of the money because they haven't mentioned that. Uh, can I jump in there, Chair? Yeah. Please. Yeah, um, come. I think I did say that they had a Santa sleigh fundraising event that they did last year that raised a thousand pounds. They plan to repeat that this year to get a thousand pounds raised plus another few bits. So they have got a, a plan in place for that. Thank you, Jay. I mean, I'm I'm in agreement myself with this, unless Peter or not, obviously. But I mean, um, one of the things they do say about the preschool is it's critical for behaviours and what have you at the primary. And as they as they set the st the standard as they go through, so that'd be quite. I mean, there's there's the benefit, if nothing else. So is everybody in agreement? Do we go with this? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, um, unanimous, Jay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, next one is Harston Residence Group. Um, they're a, a resident association slash community group. The project type is a biannual litter pit. Um, the group was established in 2018 um, and they aim to protect and enhance the heritage and character of Harston and enable campaigns on village issues. Um, the group hold a biannual village litter pit. These benefit the whole community, providing a cleaner and safer environment for all who live and use the village. Um, at the March 2021 litter pick, 60 residents attended. Unfortunately, South Cams were only able to supply 30 litter pickers due to high demand. The group have therefore decided to purchase 30 additional litter pickers. Um, the total, including VAT, is 441.36. Um, the group has secured a grant from the South Cams Community Safety Partnership for the purchase of Hybis vests for around about 150. So that leaves their shortfall of 441.36, which is exactly what they've applied for. Um, the group tell us they've got district councillor support and they haven't requested any financial support from the parish council because the parish council have helped them on previous projects. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. So it does seem to me I'm surprised that South Cams haven't been able to supply them with enough litter pickers, uh, the actual tool rather than the individuals. Um, 
uh, and therefore we're really helping ourselves by buying these. And I, I, I think we should do it. I couldn't agree more. Am I looking at nods? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gail. Thank you. Sorry, Chairman, before we go on, yeah. could I just ask before we go on? I, I agree with Councillor Arlington, but, but could we not um, send a message to um, shared waste to say maybe they need to buy more um, tools um, if this is going to be... I have a note ready about that, sir. Thank you. Yeah. They, should, well, I was they should have spoken to Arnie. Arnie the magician, as we call him. Yeah. I mean, if they if they sometimes come across times when they don't have enough litter pickers, then they need to buy more litter pickers. I think, yeah. Um, the next one is just one. Milford. Sorry, Jay, just one final comment. Two shakes, Jay. I think they should be congratulated on getting sixty residents to come out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, in I'm ashamed to say, in my local villages, um, we haven't had so many, but they're, they're a dedicated bunch and they're to be admired. I'll pass on the congratulations from the committee whilst we grant them. Thank you. The next case is Meldrick Bowls Club. They're a community group. Um, it's a non-for-profit bowling club offering bowling to its 38 members and the local community within surrounding villages. They have an ongoing recruitment campaign, so they're actively trying to seek more members. They're putting publications in local magazines to encourage members to join and participate. Normally, the group raises funds through organised events, but it hasn't been possible during the pandemic. Um, they need to upgrade the irrigation system for the bowls green. Um, it's not the sprinkler heads aren't working at the moment, basically, and the green isn't uh, in a condition it should be in. Um, the system's several years old, and some of the areas now damaged because the water sprayers aren't covering the whole area. Um, if they don't replace these soon, the whole green could be unplayable. Um, the cost of the upgraded sprinkler system is 1,112. Um, and in order to get the project up and running, the group will supplement the shortfall from some small reserves that they've got, but will keep up the fundraising. Um, but obviously more difficult during COVID. So the total applied for is £1,000. Total project cost is 1,112. And the group advise us that they've got support from Councillor Hart. Um, and the parish council has provided them with funding towards pathway lighting. Um, and they're also asking the parish council for support for major roofing repairs on their, their building there. Thank you. Right, before I go to members, just to be clear to you, you guys, um, I also support this um, for the reason why I wasn't asked because I'm sitting here. So um, uh, I've been invited here actually as part of the community um, a few years back when they did their open days and they do this all for free and they to encourage families, children to come in and do uh, bowling. It's really rather nice actually. It's a very small, private kind of lovely club actually. They, they really do well and uh, so I, I would be very supportive if anyone could get hold of I can put the floor in. Bill. Um, thank you, Jay. Uh, I mean, it's a, a relatively small sum if it's going to save the, the green, if the green becomes unplayable. I mean, that's the end of the club, so I'm fully supportive. Sure. I think um, bowls is one of those activities which young and old can all get involved in, and we should be encouraging people to get out there and play. So I'm all for it. Uh, Claire and Pete, you're okay with that? Yep, that's a, that's a yes from us then, Jay. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> okay, on to the next one. Um, the North Stow Community Wing, uh, Friends of the Wing, um, they're hoping to set up a community cafe. Um, it's a community group and this funding is for startup costs. The Friends of the Wing exists to promote the use of the community space in, in the community wing building as a hub for community cohesion and make the space more hospitable for users. 
Um, the group wished to set up a non-for-profit community cafe to be run by volunteers in the cafe space within the wing. It's recognised there is a need to provide spaces for social contact to help combat isolation and loneliness post-COVID. Um, so they're aiming to provide a suitable environment um, to get residents in uh, and also to have activities there and also promote activities already happening at the wing to these people as they use the cafe. Um, products will be locally sourced to support local businesses. Prices will be kept as low as possible to simply cover costs, um, aiming to make the project accessible and self-sustaining. Um, they hope to serve good quality hot and cold drinks and simple pre-prepared snack type items. Initially, it will run one morning a week with an aim to slowly increase this as demand and volunteers allow. The cafe will be advertised widely. The group did provide a detailed breakdown of all of the costs, which equal 13, 13, sorry, £1,368, which includes equipment like a card reader, blackboard, uh, white goods like freezers, uh, cups and jugs and things like that. Funds will be raised by first personal donations from friends of the wing, and the group have also asked the new town council clerk um, for financial support. Um, we did inquire again to the clerk if any funds were available, but we didn't get a response from the clerk as yet. So we don't have any sort of promise um, from them. Um, Councillor Chung Johnson supports this project wholeheartedly. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. I run a similar sort of event like this in my village. And one of the things that I would suggest is that they get in touch with cycling groups because you find that they come. You need to be warned that they're coming because there's sometimes 12 or 20, but they can really bring something different to a group and increase the social interactions and also increase the profitability of the whole job. I think this is an excellent idea in a place like North Stowe where there's a whole load of people who have never all moving into a new environment and they need to get to know each other. So I'm very supportive of something like this. It would be nice, however, for the Parish Council to make a contribution. Bill? Yeah, I, um, I agree with Councillor Ellington. It's a, it's a good point about the cyclists. You see them everywhere, don't you? Lycra clad people with coffee in hand. Um, <laughs> um, I, I would say um, that, you know, North Stowe are really the, the relatively small number of residents there now at the moment. Um, obviously, it's building, but they really are working hard to build a community, and we should be doing everything we can to support them. So, fully support this. Thank you. Claire? Um, yeah, I echo what everyone else has said. Um, just a question about the sustainability of it. I don't know if you can um, give us any idea on that, Jay. And they say friends of the wing and the group. Do we know how many people are in the group and what, whether it really is sustainable beyond a few um, willing volunteers who want to start it off? That's my first point. And my second point really is to say, to echo what Bill said and say that we should go to... Or they or we should go to the parish council and ask them if they could make up the shortfall. Thanks. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, sustainability wise, um, I mean, because we want the wing to succeed and we've got our own South Cambridge Community Development officers also um, assisting on the project, I think we'll make sure that. The project is self-sustaining um, and make sure that the community has access to everything they need to make sure it's a success um, so i can only um, just guarantee we're doing every we're going to do everything we can to help make it a success hopefully that's of some reassurance lovely i'm looking at pete i'm assuming that we have um agreement here i'll say yes from us thank you joe thank you joe Um, the next one, um, I was going to recommend that we 
defer. Um, I will just go through it quickly and then would like your decision, please. It's Shelford Feast. Um, they're a community group. Um, it's a it's a retrospective application. They've already had the event um, because it couldn't be taken to committee last month. Um, basically, owing to COVID-19, the group postponed the Shelford Feast in 2020. Um, and they proposed to run a much reduced one day event on the 10th of July, 2021. Um, it, would, it was a free to enter afternoon and evening with food and drink and live music. Um, brings the community together. Um, obviously just a one day event this year rather than the normal week long program, which they hope to resume from next year. Um, they were looking for funding to help with startup costs. Um, they like to put it on as a free event and the sales of food and drink um, go towards the set up the costs uh, and hopefully uh, recover all the costs that way. Um, I think the issue is that we went back to them and asked them how did the event go and how much money did you make and do you still require this grant um, and they haven't come back to us and um, we sent them an email reminder three days ago and they still haven't come back to us. So the thoughts from our team were well if they made a profit then they wouldn't need the grant so i was thinking it might be sensible to defer this until we had the answer on on how much a shortfall they actually had thank you jay i completely agree but i can see john's got his hand up so john yeah thank you chair um yeah jay is you know exactly the, the, the concerns that I have about this. Also, um, as this feast has been going for quite a few years, actually, I couldn't get my head around why it was a start, why they needed money for startup costs, because it's not actually something new and it's been set up. The other thing that I sort of, I don't know how, we, what, if we've had a set of accounts from them, but the other thing that um, worried me a bit was the reference to having reserves and again you know um i i'm i'm a bit concerned that we are funding them to fund other people rather than us funding those people direct and us being able to then decide whether that funding is you know meets our uh, policy and, and criteria so this whole thing is a bit I, I need a lot more information on this. And, and as Jay says, if this did go ahead, uh, what actually, how much did it actually cost them? Um, and it may be that they covered their costs. So, um, yeah. That's a defer then. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Hold on, I will um, get the answer to those questions and bring it back for a decision at the next meeting. Okay, before you go on, uh, Jay, please. Um, yeah, just quickly. Um, I've, got, I've got no problem with the, with the deferral. I think what, what John uh, mentions is uh, correct. It does attract a huge number of people. Um, and if they can get back to a week-long event, that would be fantastic for next year. Um, I, I think, I suspect that they've probably more or less broken even this year, which is probably why they haven't gone back to Jay. But anyway, let's see. I think the clue in asking for money is when you're asked a question by the person giving the money, will you answer the question? So they've had at least two bites of that, Jerry. So it's deferred until they, they read their email and answer, perhaps. So yeah, leave that with you then, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, two left. Um, next one is Wilbram Memorial Hall and Recreation Ground Trustees. It's a charity. Um, the project type is equipment purchase. Um, the group own, provide and manage the Memorial Hall, uh, the recreation ground and sports facilities for Great and Little Wilbram. They provide facilities for 10 to 22 groups, sports teams and a social club. They host regular events such as village fairs and entertainment. And the aim of the group is to encourage participation and cohesion. Um, there's quite a lack of public transport in the village. Um, it's quite isolated, so they feel this is an important part of their village life. 
the trust caters for all residents of the Wilgrams and for visitors to the community. The organisation started in 1949 and um, they have a very old and inadequate tennis table um, which is made available to all the hall users um, and the table tennis club. Um, the table is fairly usable. Um, they've got 14 members who come and provide their own nets, balls and bats. Um, it age ranges from teenagers to people in their 80s, so it's a very inclusive club. The hall just purchased two brand new tables from their own reserves, um, which is all they could get, and they're looking for grant funding for a further one table. Um, the club is gradually increasing in membership as COVID restrictions ease. Um, and the cost of the table is £999.99. Uh, we received a quote for this exact amount from the table tennis company. Um, so they're looking to basically replace their third inadequate table with a nice new table so that all members of the club have a decent um, table to play on. Thank you. Claire. Yes. Um, I can vouch for everything that's said there. It's very active and there are certainly members of all ages. Um, they were, I was at a meeting in the small meeting room down there on Tuesday night and they were all there playing away. Um, so, and it's, I know it's very popular in both villages. Um, and also the Memorial Hall Trust does a lot of fundraising for all their activities. They're very, it's a very active group. So I would support this wholeheartedly. Uh, yes, Bill. Uh, Peter? Yeah. Have a yes from us, please, Jay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> the last one is for Arthur Rank Hospice um, in the Shelfords. Um, it's a charity. Um, obviously benefits the residents of the whole of South Thames um, as people that go there are from all our villages. Um, this initially came in as a, uh, a zero carbon grant but it was felt that it would sit better with, with community chest. Um, Arthur Rank Hospice, as you probably know, supports people living in Cambridgeshire with advanced serious illnesses or life-limiting conditions and those in need of end-of-life care. They care for more than 4,000 patients each year. Um, the project is the Arthur Rank Hospice Charity Nature Project. Um, the new hospice site opened in November 2016 and was developed on a piece of unused scrubland. Um, they've got a garden area um, of grasses, but it has little environmental value or aesthetic value at the moment. There's one lone magnolia tree there, and the area is backed by a hedge. Um, the charity would like to create an area of the hospice garden dedicated to scent and introducing plants whose oils could be used in their own therapy. Um, the garden would be a place of sanctuary and peace for patients and their families and uh, volunteers. Um, the area of the garden is presently dormant and the project would open up the space and encourage uh, people to use it. Um, the charity has lots of volunteers and they're working with the Men's Shed local project um, on this project. Um, there are a team of 12 gardeners who are on site weekly to maintain the hospice gardens in conjunction with their facilities team. They're asking for a um, a pergola and raised wooden beds and a wooden bench um, and some plants and some seeds and some mulch, basically adding up to £1,313. They can reclaim the VAT, so that would only, the cost of the whole project is 1094 and they're applying for the full thousand um, and they'll fund the, the shortfall. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, Hospices are very close to my heart, actually, so this has my almost immediate support. But what about uh, you guys, Peter? I mean, it, it sounds like a wonderful project. So, yeah. would you like to have, would you like to have yeah. a yes? The area um, that they describe it, I, I remember when it opened, and it's a very accurate description of, of the area, but and with. 
the money that we would be able to provide, it would make a big difference to that part of the market. As a yes from us, John, thank you very much for that, that work on that with the team, and thank Vicky as well. Thank you, Chair, and that's the last one for the community guest grant today. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Okie doke. Moving on then to agenda item number five, which is the service support grant annual reports. That's page 21 to 34 of the agenda. Um, am I right in thinking that's Leslie? Good morning. Good morning, Leslie. Um, Good morning, over, everybody. Over to you, please. Okay, so um, I'm presenting two reports to committee this morning. Um, the first one is the annual performance reviews for the current recipients of the voluntary sector service support grants, and we are reviewing year two of their three year agreement. Um, but please note that they have spent the last 18 months of the two years, those first few years, operating within exceptional and unforeseen circumstances. Um, and so uh, I think it's worth noting, and you may have read, that some have struggled to reach the, those um, original targets that we did set. The second report reviews the agreements following the workshop that we held earlier this month. And that was really to review the existing agreements um, against corporate objectives, and this is in advance of the, um, as the agreements are in their final year, so we're, we're set to, to begin new agreements from April of next year. So we really wanted to make sure that they still aligned to the corporate objectives, uh, and if there were any changes, then now would be the time to review them. So from that workshop, four issues emerged. Um, uh, the first one was that the, um, is it the right time really to be um, uh, uh, making new agreements um, based on the ongoing economic uncertainty? So is it really fair to ask these organisations to make forecasts uh, for performance based on the unknown that we're in at the moment? Um, it was also put forward to introduce a new theme for organisations and groups who work specifically with children and young people um, and this was in recognition that this demographic have particularly suffered um, throughout the pandemic in terms of education and mental health and kind of loss of social connections. Um, the third issue was to review the continued funding of the Parliament Museum and the fourth was to review the budgets going forwards, given that there has been no increase um, other than those inflationary uplifts and that's been for many years. Uh, but also in light of the fact that the uh, organisation um, or the council are also trying to um, keep a tab on spending, I guess, in the future. Um, so over to you, Chair. Thank you, Leslie. Um, I'm looking at John here just for a second. Um, where we've done the workshops on my VO cells and the discussions that we had here. Could I hear from you, John, or could rather could we hear from you first? If you have any thoughts yourself um, to help guide us, I think I probably know which way we're already thinking of going. But as the head of finance, it would be pretty good from you. Okay. Well, um, obviously we had a, as, as the report says, um, Bill, um, Leslie, and I met after um, the workshop, and one of the concerns I had, and it's sort of supported by the reports that we've had um, in the in, in agenda item five um, and that is that it's been extremely difficult for our existing um, the, 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 the organizations that we, we, we support currently to uh, deliver some some of them have some of them have because circumstances have meant that for example the, the citizens advice, um, they, they've obviously been extremely busy in the last 18 months. Um, but there are other organisations that because the places have been closed, uh, particularly, you know, museums and art galleries, etc., haven't been able to meet their targets. And I felt it was terribly unfair, therefore, for us to ask them to come forward with a business case um, going forward for the for the next three years based on you know experience that's very unusual and 
given us a, a situation where we would have to, in a lot of cases, not have the evidence um, to support their business case and have to make a judgment of which I felt wasn't fair on them or, or on us. So my view was that we should delay uh, making a, 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 a judgment on next on, on the renewal of the contracts uh, for a year. Um, so in effect, extending the current um, contracts for a year, um, thereby enabling those groups that want to re um, um, rebid or new groups um, who, who want uh, to come forward, give them the opportunity of at least uh, six months or so of perhaps post-pandemic normality to enable them to actually um, deliver us um, uh, their, their business cases. Um, so my, my view on this is that we should um, that we should postpone this for a year um, and extend the current um, agreements for a year to cover to cover the next 12 months. Um, and but but in terms of the children, I'm fully support the idea that we should uh, be looking at organisations that support uh, children, and young people. But that then would give us the opportunity of having maybe some trials in the forthcoming year to get to understand the situation, so that um, we we know better what we are looking for. Uh, then, then just you know, sort of going straight into it uh, for a three-year period. So, so that would also give them and us an opportunity of that extra year would give us the opportunity to more understand what we actually want for to support for young children and and um, for children and young and young people. So. My, my view is that we, as I say, we delay this a year. Um, as to the other, um, you know, questions you're asked, um, decisions, um, I, I fully take on board what's been said about the fact that our, um, that the pot of money that's been made available hasn't actually kept pace with inflation at all. That the pot of pot of money that we've got uh, for these organisations, um, you know, hasn't hasn't been increased um, in line with inflation, and I think therefore we need to um, also um, accept that we probably would need to increase the funding. But again, we don't really know, and this is why I think it's useful to have the extra year. We don't actually know how that has impacted on these organisations, for example, whether or not they have been able to make um, savings um, to enable them to actually um, absorb the increase in inflation over that period. So we need to better understand their position as well. So again, I think this um, moratorium for a year would give us the opportunity again to look at the costs, um, the increasing costs that these organisations have experienced over the over the last um, three years or so uh, to enable us then to review the budget for them um, with some evidence. And then finally on the um, farmland museum, um, there comes a point where we have to decide, uh, is, is this a going concern? Can it stand on its own two feet? If it can't, then what support are we going to give it? Or if it can, then should we continue to support it? And again, um, I think the extra year would give us the opportunity or the officers the opportunity to work with uh, the Farmland Museum to identify what, what should happen to our support going forward. So it's all in all, my, my view is that 
uh, and it, you know delaying things by a year would actually give us opportunities to enable us to properly review and for the organizations to be able to present to us um, you know business plans that are rooted in some um, evidence um, of, of normality whereas at the moment um, well, you know we, we can see from the reports that some have you know community transport for example you know the numbers have definitely gone down not not necessarily because they're doing a bad job but people have stopped traveling because of the pandemic and is that going to continue i mean are people's ha shopping habits changed for example we don't know so again i think it gives everyone the opportunity to reassess their situation and 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 for us to have a better view of you know what we should do going forward thanks thank you john that's extremely comprehensive um members i think bill was first then claire if you don't mind yeah thanks um yeah i, I entirely agree with john on, on this chairman um the, there is a slight risk that we, well, we need to be really careful how the message is put to the three various organizations that we have here to, for them to fully understand that this is not in any way a negative thing we're not saying well we're doubting them what we're saying is we you know we can't really assess them properly um, uh, under the current circumstances with the pandemic so it needs to this needs to be um, you know explained to them very carefully and indeed to anybody who's observing this that this is a positive actually a positive thing and not a negative thing Claire. Um, yes, thanks. So, um, yes, I agree with what John has just said. I'm very glad that uh, of the recognition that the funds have been uh, haven't been increased in line with inflation. The recognition of that, and that we want to do something about that. Um, I want to speak up for the farmland museum. Um, I don't. We could provide more support for cultural activities. I mean, we, you know, we've just been looking at the. Um, community chest and, and most of what we've supported is sports related we haven't supported much in the way of arts or music so i hope that we can give those more prominence in the future um, and in terms of the farmland museum um, before lockdown they put a lot of effort into uh, relaunching themselves bringing in new people um, and then of course have been badly hit by the closure during the pandemic so i hope that we can um, keep on in there with them. Um, they do good work. And of course, in the not too distant future, they're going to benefit from all the changes in Water Beach. And it will be much easier to actually get to the museum than it is at the moment. It's actually quite difficult. It's a very difficult turning off the A10. And it's very easy to drive past it. So um, I want to support them and I hope that we will continue to support them. Thank you. I'd like to um, add my support to. Claire's comments on when we had the Farmland Museum here. I think they, pre-pandemic, they were actually doing quite well with their change of business plan. But um, like everybody else, they got clobbered. So yeah, okay, uh, Peter, and then um, just a couple of comments. Yeah, uh, to to John's point in um, comparing the numbers, every set of numbers I looked at, I said, well, actually, we can't compare anything because of the impact of the pandemic. So I think that the logic to carry forward is, is correct. Um, I think for the Farmland Museum, as Claire has mentioned, there will be, the Farmland Museum should have a renaissance as Water Beach is developed because it'll basically have a huge captive audience which it doesn't have at the moment. Uh, it's very easy to drive past it and uh, you know kind of forget it's there, whereas it's actually an, a, a nice location. So yeah, I should think, I think we should hang on in there. Sue. Thank you. Um, I failed to declare an interest that I am trustee of Care Network. But having said that, um, I, I entirely agree with the idea of leaving it for another year. But I would ask that each of these organisations really needs to totally review their business plan, what they are seeking to achieve in this new world and um, also I would want to see um, 
some breakdown of, of what, how the money was spent during the pandemic in order to just get the feel that they are business minded and haven't um, in some way, it's the wrong word to say squandered it, but you know, just because we couldn't spend it, we'll spend it on something else. All right, I, I agree. Okay, Leslie and John, so where are our comments from the floor? I mean, they, they essentially agreed with everything you both said in, uh, in, our, in our way, and that's so essentially then it's the extension um, uh, deferment, whichever you wish to call it, for the year. And I, I, I'm assuming, Leslie, that you and your, your colleagues will come back with a, an idea of how we're going to survey and get that information from people and perhaps if you'll be willing as regards to how Sue has just said to have you know, perhaps a finer detail of how things were spent last year and then we'll do on that again so we can get an idea actually of how people behave because that's actually yeah. human behaviour isn't it so thank you I think Claire would like to come back um, yes so on, on one um, project in particular the Cambridge Women's Aid now we know that um, in, in some cases for these organisations uh, things will have stopped or slowed down significantly but we know that for Cambridge Women's Aid there's been a lot more uh, work going on because of the increase in cases of domestic abuse. If we leave things as they are for another year will they be struggling? Sorry, was that a question for me Claire? Leslie, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, again, that I think that's something that I would have to uh, have a conversation with them about. I think uh, what was evident that when we had the workshop is that uh, Cambridge Women's Aid do a lot more work on our behalf than we actually pay them for. Um, so um, I think it's worth a conversation with Heather Wood in housing um, uh, and Cambridge Women's Aid just to see what the impacts are. Um, and, and whether there's an opportunity to, you know, if, if further funds are needed, then how we can support them. Um, so, yeah, I, I remember making the point in the workshop, and, and certainly, you know, the, the workshop that Heather led we, uh, was very good. Um, I know from uh, talking to um, councillors involved with it in, in the city uh, about the increase in um, demand for the service. So maybe I'm, I'm going back to John and saying, um, would there be an exception in this case that we might need to look at increasing funding in this year ahead of a review of, ne of the next year? Um, well, I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we would we would have to look at that. Uh, the details that we have here, you can't, you couldn't, you know, make a. We we have no. We have no details about um, their performance and who they've been supporting. Um, so you know, we would need to un we would need to understand that. But but clearly, if they could identify and have the evidence uh, um, that they are doing more than the, the cost of what they're doing in support of um, South Cairns uh, residents um, isn't met by our um, by by our grant, then obviously we we would look at that. But um, I think the purpose of remember this is this is um, for next year's budget, so we're not talking about the current year. We're talking about next year's budget, and then delaying delaying things a year after that. Okay. Yes. So um, we're not we're not talking about. Um, so for next year, what we're basically saying to these groups is that your funding will continue next financial year. Um, and it may well be that some of these groups might come back to Leslie and say, well, actually, if, if we do that, then um, we, we're going to struggle. But I think, you know, we should be sympathetic, but we need the evidence. We need, and that's the, that's the problem that we have with this, um, is that their experience this year, this financial year, might, is probably not typical, but we don't know. 
So, for example, if um, you know, Cambridge Women's Aid has, has seen a lot more cases this year, will that be the case? Will that be the situation in the next financial year? So we need to understand that. So I'm not saying, no, you have to make do with what we're giving you, what we've given you for this year. Uh, going and rolling that into next year. But on the other hand, we just can't, you know, the whole purpose of this is to give us a chance to, and them a chance to, to see what life is going to be like now. Um, and so I don't want us to start reviewing all these, um, all these contracts and grants that we have, you know, ahead of next financial year, because um, the whole idea of having a moratorium is to keep the same level of funding next financial year and not to review things because otherwise we might as well go to new contract you know we might as well um so i think while i'm sympathetic and i'm sure we all are that some of these organizations uh, have found themselves much busier because of the pandemic um that doesn't mean to say that that will continue into next financial year. So I think we need to just bear that in mind. Could I also add there, John, as well, that um, I think pretty much like ourselves, this last 18 months has also been an opportunity for organisations to sort of streamline themselves administratively. So uh, they might find that as a result of the pandemic and home working, uh, loss of travel, you know, um, my, sort of mileage expense claims that they are running more efficiently than they were pre-pandemic. But again, I think these things take time, don't they, to, to realise. Mm. Yeah. Just if I might come back, and Leslie, there's a question for you. When we did the workshop and Claire was talking about this, um, the Women's Aid in particular, they were doing work for us, which was, was it referral or was it? Like it was, um, yeah, they, they sit um, on the domestic homicide review panel, um, which I think, uh, which we don't pay them for, but they, they need to attend. And I, I think they, there are four a year with ongoing cases. And I think we sort of made a back of a, a, sort, of, a, a sort of rough calculation, basically, of how much that actually costs them, which we don't fund them for. Um, so if if we did want to fund them fairly going forward for the uh, work that they do on our behalf um, for the domestic homicide reviews, then that's something that we could approach them for. Um, and I'm thinking, John, that we, we have that £38,000 which we didn't spend on the mobile warden schemes that we've kind of ring fenced now for the children and young people. But there's no reason why perhaps we could apportion some of that to cover the cost um, of their representation on the, those uh, review panels. Yes, yeah, certainly. Although I, I, I would suggest that um, if they are required, if we require them to be on those review panels, then it's not a grant fund that they should get. It should be it should be a proper arrangement that we should fund them out of one of the service budgets. Now, you know, if if they're there, um, and uh, be, you know, if it's a, if it's a housing requirement, then that ought to be funded by housing, not by our grant. But that's something we need to take away and uh, and think. But you're absolutely right. You know, any any cost should be that they're having to incur because of doing work for us. We should be funding, um, you know, and we, and, and um, absolutely on that. But where that funding should come from, we, we need to have a discussion, I think, on that. Okay. Through, through you, John and Leslie, then, I think on behalf of ourselves here, would it be possible with that, with that particular case, with regard to the uh, pending boards and what have you for the um, homicide and what have you, um, would be looked at sooner rather than later? The back of the fact packet calculation that we did, I think, to be fair, astonished all of us on the workshop. Um, the level of monies was basically level, if I recall, if I recall, with what we grant fund them now. It was a huge sum of money, 
that they are being deprived of essentially so therefore that work may not be going ahead so that's all I would say is if off, off, offline if we could could action that would be super grateful I think on our behalf here but yeah all we need to say on that thank you So, so could I ask then, sorry, Joe, for clarity then, we, are, are we agreeing that we are going to extend the, the grants for the coming year uh, and review agreements this time next year in 2022? Absolutely. As, as basically as was suggested by yourself and John. Yeah, and then... And, and the children and young people grant, we're going to use the, the mobile warden theme left over £38,000 for this. And we're going to proceed with uh, a new theme from April of next year, which we will use as a pilot for one year. Yes. And then, yeah. Um, Chairman, yes. Um, could I just then, uh, yeah, uh, I agree with that. I think that's what we, what we discussed at the workshop. So, um, will we come back, will that come back to this committee with more bones on it, what the theme might be, how it might be administered, that kind of thing? So we'll have a then, chance to discuss yeah, it. So yeah. I, I, um, I put in the appendix, um, uh, I think there was an appendix there which outlined the aims and objectives of the Children and Young People um, grant. Yeah. Um, uh, to include the criteria, which is very much aligned to the criteria that we have with the service support grant, so that wouldn't change too much. Um, I think it would just be a case of reviewing the aims and objectives if you wanted to change those, or alter them in any way. Could we have a look at those now then? Yep. Appendix B, on page 45. I suppose the obvious comment or question would be that we're, uh, we tend not to fund educational um, establishments. Do we need to make that absolutely clear? Claire? Um, yes, yeah, so um, uh, on page 45 in the middle, it says community groups can apply for funding uh, to be agreed. Um, are we seeking to agree that level at this meeting then? It, it would be helpful. We've got thirty-eight thousand pounds in that in that pot, um, and given our experience of the um, the uh, zero carbon grant, it's what level of grant funding we're willing. You know, what can community organisations achieve? Really, how how much is a an achievable amount of money for them to really make an impact? So, do we need to set an upper cap? you know, of maybe £5,000 or £2,000 or... Bill? Yeah, um, on the amount, um, bearing in mind what we said earlier uh, about the kind of wind rate and so on, is it something that we need to take away and discuss, uh, John, um, the actual amount? We've got the print, if we can agree the principle the actual amount can be determined outside of the meeting. Is that possible, Chair? I think so. We could uh, set up another quick meeting if you like. 
Could, could I propose actually that we uh, we could organise a meeting with the uh, children and young people's coordinator at um, Cambridgeshire County Council? She'll have a really good idea of what sort of projects there are out there. Um, uh, so we can have those conversations with community groups really just to say, look, we have got this pot of money. Um, how much, you know, what, what would be a good amount to apply for to get your projects off the ground? Yeah, I, in fact, you know, picking up on what Leslie's just said, sorry, uh, the reason I had my hand up is that um, one of the things I'm a bit conscious of is that we need to coordinate this with what the county is doing. Mm. The county are responsible for youth services. And I, I would suggest that we would expect the organisation to be working with the county council, or at least acknowledging the county council and letting the county council know what they intend to do to ensure that you know it's all joined up um whereas i think otherwise i think we could and we have funded things through the community chest haven't we of uh, youth, youth projects for example um but i'm just conscious that this this is one step beyond you know um funding a scout group or or uh, or people to 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 maintain some um, you know woodland or something. This is actually being part of providing um, facilities for um, young children, um, you know, children and young young people. And it needs to ensure that that it fits with the county strategy um, in that provision. So I I would like us to, as I say, when we come to criteria. That, that the organisation should at least have let the county know of its proposal, if not indeed being being in contact with the county to ensure that what they are doing fits with the overall plan of the of the county's youth service or youth provision. Thank you, Claire. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, can I um, endorse that as well? And also, I think we, we as elected members, can tell our councillors, our, our county councillor colleagues, who are uh, particularly the new chair and vice chair of that councillor Goodliffe and councillor King Coralabra, um, and, and we can talk to them about that. There's a new uh, committee now, Children and Young People Committee in the county, so we can alert the members as well. Bill. Maybe in, um, you know, with the consent of the meeting, I, I guess it's for me to be a part of, of this. Um, very happy to do that. So maybe if Leslie can set up a meeting with counterparts in county, we can have a, a discussion on this, and I can be part of it. Is, are you happy with that? I'm absolutely for that. I mean, would you would you recommend we do this sooner rather than later, Leslie? I think we need to get the ball rolling sharply. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, I'm happy to do it as quickly as uh, as quickly as Leslie can cover it. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Uh, back to you then, Leslie. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I think we were just running through the, the agreement. So we we'd agreed with the. Um, so if you're happy, then we're, we're we're happy with the children and young people's grant. So the the action from that is to set up the meeting with county council representatives to move on to the farmland museum we're going to extend their contract uh, or their agreement for a further year and then review um, and then the and, and then in terms of budget reviews um, that would need to take place next year in sort of July August of next year okay Starting that process even now, just to get a, a hint with with John at the Select Two Committee. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Yes. So, so seem to seem to recall um, when it comes to the farmland museum. We just I think we did just get back to the meeting that there might be a, might be a case for um, probably inserting more art and culture um, in in our my little plan by, if you like, um, <coughs> into which the Farmland Museum and, 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 and organisations like it 
might fall so that you know they're part of the yeah it, it, it's a regularizing it i suppose I, yeah i think that's what i was saying before it, it i know that um we spoke about this at the workshop and, and myself and councillor khan martin khan and, and councillor clayton gavin clayton certainly been talking about this over the years and i'd really like to see how we can highlight the fact, particularly in the community chest, that we do support uh, music and the arts and to encourage applications. I mean, it's quite a long time since we had an application from a band, for example. Um, I can't remember it in the last year or two. And I know that that kind of music, music bands and choirs have been badly affected by COVID and might well need some help to, to get them up and running again. So now maybe is the time to to put some emphasis on that. And then also in the future, um, you know, to bring culture more to the fore in, in grant giving. Right then. Okay, just a couple of things left along with this. Um, where are we? Peter. Oh, sorry, Peter. Thanks. Um, just to, uh, when we're talking about the Farmland Museum and thinking apart from Bill's point, um, we are working on a visitor economy um, strategy. That's quite well advanced now. So some things like Farmland Museum ultimately, I think, will fall into that area. Um, so for our, the new website which will launch in the autumn has, has the Farmland Museum and Debbie, Denny Abbey on the front uh, of its landing page. So. Um, so I think it will naturally fall into another area after this year. Yeah, that's, that's, that's brilliant. I mean, you know, farm, farming and farmland is so important to this district, so, you know, it's good that it is. If you just bear with us, because we've been, the way we've discussed this, we've kind of, we've covered two agenda items, really, five and six, I think, so... We're just in the process of trying to put the little bit we did there, if you like, because we're making, consulting with Aaron at the moment. But essentially, everything is fine. Now the paperwork has to be brought up to spec. Otherwise, we get ourselves in trouble. Okay, so if you could just uh, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Thanks. Right, guys. Um, on page 39 of your agenda, if you could just zoom back to that, please. This is the, um, the admin now, John and Leslie. I've had my knuckles wrapped by Democratic services. <laughs> right. Um, under options on agenda or, or point 26, they've got part one A and B on page 39. We've agreed section B, and on part two, we've, we've agreed part A. If you then pop over the page to page 40, we have part three, A, B, and C, and I believe that we were going to go with uh, A, and part four, We're going to look, so that would be part A, wouldn't it? We're going to look at the potential inflationary pressures and what have you of the, the various grants. Is that right, Leslie? I would say it's part B, isn't it? We're going yeah. to look at an part increase B. to the voluntary and community sector, but it might be worth just noting that that, that will be reviewed next year. Okay. So, so we're going to go from part four with uh, uh, with B. Yeah, everyone's happy with that, yeah? Guys? Right. Uh, with the proviso that it's in next year's financial assessment. Yeah? You're looking perplexed, Leslie. 
and then in the pre the, we had the previous paper as well um, uh, and that was really just to note uh, performance against objectives um, or uh, to, to seek further investigation or clarification. Um, that's on page 20, bottom of page 22, um, top of page 23. Options one and two, yeah? Yeah. So basically, is there any further action you'd like me to take um, or not? No. So the op options, we've done the options one, don't we? Yeah. And wasn't the further action um, relating to domestic, domestic homicide abuse um, under there as well? Because that related to the women's aid. The department, yes. Yeah. And again, I think the, the action from that would be uh, to have a conversation with housing. Um, first and foremost, um, just to, I think we need to clarify if, if we are going to pay for their presence on the domestic homicide review panel, then where that funding comes from uh, and which service, for, uh, which service budget, perhaps. Um, can I just um, add in there that I think at the moment, Leslie, it comes from the CSP budget, doesn't it? It comes partly from the CSP budget and partly from the Police and Crime Commission. And there's a big debate going on at the moment about the funding of domestic homicide review. Okay, so then yeah. just, just to be clear, we're going to go to option one, but with the, the addition of the... Um, the well, I, I, so, sorry, Chair. Um, I don't see how you can because a number of these reports say that it's not on track, that they're not on track. What I was going to suggest was that you amend um, that you amend two to recognise that some that some aren't on track. Uh, for example, you've got um, art and minds. Um, you've got uh, I think it's one of the community transport. Um, RT, RDCT um, and Home Start Royston. And just recognise in the minutes that you appreciate that because of COVID, it has affected the performance of those. So what I'm suggesting is we don't need an investigation because we, can, we, we know why these, these, uh, these have underperformed. Um, but we need, to, we need to note that. In the, in the minutes rather than just say, oh, they've all been on track because they haven't been on track. No. Fair enough. Okay. How else about that? Okay. That's lovely. Leslie, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so can I just check? Because as I say, we've been jumping around a little bit on uh, item five and six. So we've, we've done both, have we now? Are you happy that we've, we've completed both? Yeah, I'm clear that both have been completed. So it's agenda item five and six, yeah? Yeah. yeah. In that case, thank you, Leslie. <laughs> and thank you, Aaron, for my sore knuckles. <laughs> um, have you. John, uh, your input as usual has been invaluable. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to colleagues on the, on the, uh, the committee here and Dennis Overton for your superb support. It just leads me to say that the next meeting is on Friday, the 24th of September at 10 a.m. And I'm assuming it's going to be back here. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, in that case, to one and all, uh, thank you very much. Have a good afternoon and a lovely weekend. And can you kill the feed? <laughs> <laughs>